story time. I have one for you that seems like it's going to be scary, but actually it's more funny. I like stories that kind of talk about things that might seem scary, but then they aren't very scary. This book is called Funny Bones, and it's by Janet and Alan Alberg, who've actually written quite a few books for kids. And you can see the book is about skeletons. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of skeletons. Here they are. Here's a little skeleton family peeking in the door. And here's the title page. That says Funny Bones with the author's names. And here we have, they're looking in a window. Look at that shadow. Is that a baby? And it's crib? What are they up to in that picture? I want to show you a little funny preview too. Look at the back. They're running. They're running. Who are they running from? I don't know. Who would scare a skeleton? All right, so the book starts with a lot, a lot of words right here inside this box. And I'll bring it closer so that you can see the places that they're talking about. This is how the story begins. On a dark, dark hill, there was a dark, dark town. In the dark, dark town, there was a dark, dark street. In the dark, dark street, there was a dark, dark house. In the dark, dark house, there was a dark, dark staircase. Down the dark, dark staircase, there was a dark, dark cellar. That's a basement in the bottom of the house. And in the dark, dark cellar. Hmm, I think that's where we're going, where the open door is and a spider web in the corner. What will we see? Some skeletons lived. There was a big skeleton, a little skeleton, and a dog skeleton. One night, the big skeleton sat up in bed. He scratched his skull. What shall we do tonight? He said. Hmm, that's what this talking bubble says. What shall we do tonight? Let's take the dog for a walk, said the little skeleton. And frighten somebody. Good idea, the big skeleton said. They want to scare someone for fun? Hmm, this is funny. In their house, their pictures on the wall are also skeletons. So the big skeleton, the little skeleton, and the dog skeleton left the dark, dark cellar, climbed the dark, dark staircase, and stepped out into the dark, dark street. They walked past the houses and the shops. They walked past the zoo and the police station. They went into the park. Hmm, I wonder who they'll find there in the nighttime. The big skeleton scratched his skull. What shall we do now? He said. Let's play on the swings, said the little skeleton, and throw a stick for the dog and frighten somebody. Good idea, the big skeleton said. So the big skeleton, the little skeleton, and the dog skeleton walked round the dark, dark pond, past the dark, dark tennis courts, and up to the dark, dark swings. Hmm. What will happen there? The big skeleton and the little skeleton played on the swings. They threw a stick for the dog. Suddenly, something happened. The dog skeleton chased the stick, tripped over a park bench, bumped into a tree. This talking bubble says, woof. Hmm. And the dog ended up as a little pile of bones. Oh no, 
The skeleton was fragile, and when it tripped, it fell apart when it hit the ground. Look at that, the big skeleton said. He's all come to pieces. What shall we do now? Let's put him together again, the little skeleton said. So the big skeleton and the little skeleton put the dog skeleton together again, and they sang a song while they did it. The toe bones connected to the foot bone. The foot bones connected to the leg bone. The leg bones connected to the hip bone. The hip bones connected to the backbone. But then they got all mixed up. Is that a toe bone? The little skeleton said. Where does this one go? said the big skeleton. Uh-oh. These are mixed up ways of putting the dog back together. And the dog can't even say woof. Here the talking bubble says woof -o, instead of woof. Oof wo ow off. Oh. They're mixing up the letters of woof to make other words. Even the letters are mixed up. When they had finished, the big skeleton said, that dog looks a bit funny to me. So he does, said the little skeleton. We've got his tail on the wrong end and his head. Foo, said the dog skeleton. Oh dear, his head is supposed to be up here by the ribs. Where <laughs> his tail is supposed to be back there where his back legs are. Oh no. So they fixed it, and at last the dog was properly put back together again. The big skeleton and the little skeleton sang another song. These bones, these bones can bark again, can run around in the park again, can frighten people in the dark again. The big skeleton scratched his skull. Oh, that reminds me, he said. We forgot to frighten somebody. Let's do it on the way home then, said the little skeleton. Good idea, the big skeleton said. The big skeleton always says that. So the big skeleton, the little skeleton, and the dog skeleton left the dark, dark swings, went out into the dark, dark town, and they tried to frighten somebody. Here they are walking along, and the green talking bubble from the big skeleton says, I wish we had a nice little boy to frighten. And the little skeleton's pink talking bubble says, I wish we had a nice old lady. So they're imagining who they would like to scare if they could find anybody in the nighttime. The trouble was, there wasn't anybody. Everybody was at home in bed. Even the policemen in the police station were in bed and even the animals in the zoo. Of course, the skeleton animals were awake. <gasps> skeleton animals? There are skeleton animals at the zoo? What kind of an animal do you think that is with the long neck? <laughs> Look, this tiny animal is saying, squeak, 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 squeak. Can you guess what that is? This animal is hanging from a branch and it says, snort. This animal probably says, and this animal says, oink. I bet you can guess where all of those skeletons are. Well, <laughs> look at this. They're saying, get up, Nelly. You can tell what kind of an animal that is. Here, this animal is saying, Good evening, all. Who's a cheeky boy then? Have a cup of tea. Pretty Polly, put the kettle on. Mother. Have you seen a parrot before? Some of them can talk. Did you know all of those animals on the last page? Did you guess giraffe? Did you guess fish and a mouse? And a sloth. Do you know about sloths? Of course you know about snakes and pigs. Did you know that a pig's curly tail could have bones inside it too? I'm not actually sure if that's real. 
Let's have a ride on the elephant skeleton, the little skeleton said. Let's have a word with the parrot skeleton, the big skeleton scratched his skull. Oh, uh, let's keep out of the way of the crocodile skeleton, he said. The person who did the pictures for this book, I don't know if it's Janet Alberg or Alan Alberg who does the illustrations, but didn't they make the animals look friendly even though they're made of bones? <laughs> oh, I love that they could draw skeletons in a cute way. When they were back in the street and when they could still not find anybody to frighten, the big skeleton said, what shall we do now? Look over here. Giraffe is saying bye-bye. The little skeleton scratched his skull. Let's frighten each other, he said. That's better than nothing. Good idea, said the big skeleton. The little dog is having a thinking bubble because that, see how there's a line here to make a talking bubble? Let's frighten each other, good idea. And then the dog, because it's not saying any words out loud, has a puff and then some little clouds underneath it that show that these words are just inside the mind. And the dog is thinking, what a brain. <laughs> it's kind of like saying someone's really smart. So after that, the big skeleton frightened the little skeleton. I'm coming to get you. Gotcha! Boo! <laughs> the little skeleton frightened the big skeleton, the big skeleton and the little skeleton frightened the dog skeleton, and the dog skeleton frightened them. Meow! They pretended to chase him. Woof! He said in his biggest voice. Whoa! The hat flew off. <laughs> they were pretending that the big skeleton was so surprised his hat flew off. Oh my goodness. They really knew how to have a good time. Ooh, help! They hid around corners and frightened each other. They climbed up lamp posts and frightened each other. They jumped out of dustbins and frightened each other. Dustbins? We don't really use that word. We usually use the word garbage can. Here the dog skeleton is saying, yelp. I think dustbin is a word they use in England. And they frightened each other and frightened each other all the way home. And that is how the story ends. On a dark, dark hill, there was a dark, dark town. In the dark, dark town, there was a dark, dark street. In the dark, dark street, there was a dark, dark house. In the dark, dark house, there was a dark, dark staircase. Down the dark, dark staircase, there was a dark, dark cellar. In the dark, dark cellar, some skeletons lived. There they go, back downstairs to live. And they still do the end. We never get to see any of the people that live in these houses. Who are the people that live in the house where the skeletons live in the basement? Hmm. They never really answer the question of who they're running away from, do they? If they were all scaring each other, who's behind them? Hmm, that's a little confusing. I'm so glad they found a way to have fun. Scaring games are really fun if everybody wants to play them. If they went around and scared some people who didn't want to play that game, that would actually not be a great idea, right? Because then if you're making someone else feel scared or worried, that's not fun. If it's not fun for everybody. But they all wanted to play. So then a scaring game was fun because everybody thought it was a thumbs up idea. I'm really glad you came to Story today. I'll read you another one on another day. Bye.